Hey there, gamers. It's your buddy Gary here with another fun episode of the Die by the Sword podcast. We sure do hope you're enjoying the show. We're having a blast recording it. We want to give a big old thank you to Ed and Gavin over at Midnight Syndicate for their awesome and spooky music. Check them out at www.midnightsyndicate.com. Also, a quick shout out to Sword Coast Soundscapes for the ambient sound. All right, now we're ready. Let's get on to the show. Steinmark today, like the old lady that I am. Do tell. What's it, a Steinmark? It's an old lady store. They it, don't sell, sell beer steins? No, no. They sell old they ladies. Sell old ladies. Yeah. They oh, sell they sell old ladies. Okay. I wanted to buy a new grandmother to add to my collection. Ah, uh, how many do you have? Just one now. Oh. In-law grandmother. She's awesome. Um. Anyway, I was in Steinmart and I was looking for something specific, couldn't find it, but I it's a, it's a lovely home goods store to wander around in, and I came across... This item that was a uh, it was a birthday cake topper chandelier to hold birthday candles in it. Oh Shand- my god! Chandelier? Did you, buy- did you buy it? No, I didn't. I was really conflicted because I was like, Oh, no, L. I know. I was. I was like. I was like, Oh man. One of the reasons I hesitated is that most normally I get nothing but cake. Now is my birthday cake, which has a hole in the middle, so it's like I couldn't put a where would I where would I put the topper? Um, well, if it's a chandelier, doesn't it hang from the ceiling? Not this one. This one sits. I don't know. It's a cake topper, Philip. Get with me. Oh, it's a candelabra. Yes. Yes. Like, That's like probably Liberace. more appropriate. Um, but then I realized once we got here, uh, I could have used it because for for your information, listeners, to, we were celebrating Gary's birthday today and bought a bunch of pizza. And I was like, ah, oh, I could have put, put it on, it on the pizza. pizza. Put the cake topper on the pizza. Yeah. yeah. So, Instead of a birthday cake, it's a birthday pie. Yeah. yeah. By the way, happy but, birthday, Gary. Yay. Thank you. Yay. I'm sorry I don't have a chandelier for your birth pizza. My birth pizza? Birthday pizza. Bird pizza. <laughs> bird pizza. <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> I mean, any, any pizza with chicken on it is That's a bird true. pizza. That's, That's true. true. But it doesn't I have a chandelier. I don't buy such things. You don't buy bird pizzas or chandeliers? I don't buy bird pizzas. <laughs> I mean, there's barbecue chicken pizza. There's buffalo chicken pizza. Don't. There's chicken and spinach. Yeah, I can't with call white it sauce. Yeah, you can't ranch. call it pizza. You, if you put pineapple on it, you can't call it pizza. You can call it something else and you can eat it. You but can it's hear not her pizza. Chicago accent coming out. <laughs> every, every time it's we talk very about serious. Pizza. It's like when we talk about pizza, when we talk about bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fruit the bagels. Don't fruit the bagels. <laughs> Just don't you want fruit, fruit the bagel. If you want fruit, if you want something sweet, get a fucking donut. <laughs> <laughs> Do not put blueberries in a bagel. This is- I love blueberries in a bagel. It's not a bagel. It's not, not a bagel. Pay attention. <laughs> you're not listening to the lesson today, Gary. We'll give you a break because it's your birthday. It, it, says, not- it says bagel on the bag. It's a fucking lie. And a lot of times <laughs> down fake here, bagels. Well, and then a lot of times down here, they are fake bagels, fake bagels because they're baked and not boiled. It's well, just a, I know. Well, you, 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 you cannot get an, you them. cannot get an authentic bagel down here. <laughs> it's you also, cannot do it. It's also and a bialy is out of the question. <laughs> Absolutely no bialis. I've never heard of that. What is a bialy? I'm <laughs> not even going there. Uh, what, what were you <laughs> going to say, say, Gary? I was, just, I was just going to say it's just like the people that call a sausage roll a kolache. Yes. Uh, oh, what's the fancy very word? Irritating. Club very irritating. Club Noski. They are not kolaches. They are sausage rolls. They're pigs in a blanket. Yeah. I agree with you, Gary. Absolutely, we get it's an insult. Well, I mean, we're we're in this area. There's the very heavy Czech and German roots. Mm-hmm. That's Czech why. Stop. Yeah. Yep. Oh, love Czech stop. Mm-hmm. That's where you, I get my kolaches, which are sweet pastries. Yes, yes. they're not. Uh, they're the same th- in Polish. Kol- kolaches is a sweet pastry. Yep. It's not a. It doesn't have a sausage in it. No. Everything <laughs> else has sausage in it. All right, not we're gonna have to get Liz calmed down. I know. <laughs> These are important. Things. Think about think about deep dish. <sighs> so we're playing the Carry and Crown Adventure Path. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so are there kolaches here? Uh, there might be. There, there, might, there be. might be Ooh, yeah, actually. Eastern Europe. The, yeah. This would be the area for them. <gasps> Fuck yeah, let's get some kolaches when we finish this <laughs> We've been talking about rabbits like idiots. We should have been getting yeah. kolaches. She probably has... Uh, rabbit kolaches. Now, rabbit... Cl- rabbit. Cl- uh, not kolaches. Uh, uh, Klebosniks? Rabbit Kla- chubs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> rabbit chubs. That, 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 that sounds so bad. <laughs> that sounds really dirty. <laughs> sounds very inappropriate. Not that kind of chub. <sighs> <laughs> rabbit klebosnikis. <laughs> 
<laughs> which also sounds weird. Yeah. It sounds weird, but not dirty. But you can make it dirty. You can make it dirty. Rabbit rolls. Rabbit rolls. Rabbit rolls works. Rabbit rolls. Yeah. Is that like a Rick roll, but a rabbit roll? Uh, yeah, when we no, get back. No, they're way better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. When we get back to town, uh, rabbit rolls for everyone. Yes. I'm so excited. Kalachis for dessert. I'm sure Sariana will eagerly make those for you. I she might. seems to always have rabbit on hand. I want to get kalachis in real life when we beat this. Yeah, speaking of lowering Liz's blood pressure, we're about to raise mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please refresh me. The end of last episode, you guys, you use the spirit planchette to try to get the answer of how to use the moldy spell book. And it's the words that were spelled out were right name. Right Which name. Which I had given you for free days ago. <laughs> well, we just needed to confirm it with, with no the risk of contacting a malignant spirit just the malignant me <laughs> well we're gonna deal with that either way yeah. yeah i mean i might take the spirit given the choice i don't know the spirit <laughs> lets him eat pineapple on his pizza but this is true and call it pizza but it's spirit pineapple <laughs> <laughs> never fills you and the planchette suddenly spells out pizza <laughs> Now yes. that's terrifying. <laughs> Pizza with pineapple. <laughs> no, it only does one word at a time. It's one long word run together. Pizza. So we felt really clever using the spirit planchette to get that clue, and then you decided to punish me with it. All I said was that when it was your turn to do your watch, the spirit board came out of your bag on its own. Just somehow. Opened up and just started spelling... Roderick, you will all die. And about that time, the scar on your hand started hurting, and you looked up on the walls and started seeing your name written in blood all over the room. And this is not punishing me. And then you also happened to look around the room and see that all of your friends were dead. Oh, so you're punishing them instead. Maybe. So, Roderick. Mm Mm-hmm. As you look around the room and begin seeing the corpses of your friends and you see your name written in blood on the walls, you also hear a wolf howl in the distance. With that wolf howl, we're transported back about ten years to northern Ustalov. <gasps> Are we getting backstory time? We see a younger Roderick home for the harvest feast. <sighs> ah, backstory time. His father, a strong warrior standing proudly beside him while they wait for his mother outside the temple of Phrasma. A woman exits the building and comes to join them. You're running behind. Is everything okay? Roderick's father says. Oh, werewolf attack. I've healed the wounds, but now we must wait to see if he, he turns. The full moon approaches. May Phrasma spare him. We hear the temple bells slowly chime three times. The priests of Phrasma emerge from the temple wearing thin black robes and each carrying a single lit candle as they commence the procession of the unforgotten souls, a Phrasman tradition where the faithful pray to Phrasma to not take them yet. The observers stand in silence as the priests slowly walk to the nearby reflection pool. Single file, the priests step into the pool, each step taking them deeper into the water. As the candle flame hits the water, the candles are extinguished and the priests are completely submerged. One by one, as the priests emerge from the other end of the pool, and as the candle reaches above the water level, the candles reignite, signifying that Phrasma has spared them. The priests' thin black robes become transparent, revealing the brightly colored garments worn underneath. A few songbirds sing sweetly as the last of the priests emerge from the reflection pool. Before the birds fly away, the song they sing is a hymn of Shailen. During that evening celebrations, Roderick's father is approached by the captain of the militia. We found a pack nearby. We're riding out this evening. I know your son is here on holiday, but we could really use your help in clearing these pests out. Of course you do. It shouldn't take us long. I'm guessing I'll be back in time to see my son back off to university. Father, look. I won the prize at the ring toss. Roderick says as he and his mother rejoin his father. I've trained you well, I see. Well, I may have cheated. (laughs) Cheated? That does not sound like you. Well... I wanted to test the magic that I've been learning from the professor. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> that isn't very fair now, is it? How about you show me that uh, you can win without magic during the next Harvest Festival? Why not now? The boot is still open. I would love to, but Captain Jeremiah has called me away. More of those nasty werewolves have been spotted. They need my help. Oh, I understand. I wouldn't go if I didn't think it was important. Charlie has already been injured by one of those things, and we know they are close by. These up- Abominations need to be taken care of. How long will you be gone? Hopefully not so long. I'm getting pretty good at hunting them down. 
I need you to take care of your mother until it is time for you to return to the school. If for any reason I'm not back by then, I want you to head back like normal. I'll be sure to send you a raven when I arrive back home, and the extermination is complete. Here, hold on to this for me while I am gone. Roderick's father pulls the silver symbol of Phirasma from around his neck and places it around Roderick's. Roderick stares into the shiny silver spiral as we cut back to the present. Roderick sees the carnage in the room and what looks like claw marks across each of the bodies. He reaches out to Vivian, but when he does, he sees that his hands are now clawed. The full moon shining outside, shining brightly into this office, sends a wave of panic through Roderick. He starts to feel a white, hot, burning sensation on his chest. He can hear the sizzling as he reaches to find the source. It's the silver spiral of Phirasma. Panic rises even more as Roderick backs up into a corner and as he mutters, What? What? What have I done? No, I cannot become one of them. I can't become one of them. As Roderick's panic ensues, the rest of you begin to wake up, seeing him crawled into a corner panicking. <gasps> Roderick! Roderick! Could you please keep it down? I'm trying to sleep. Thurskill, hush! Get up. Yeah, okay, Vivian, what? Vivian rushes over to Roderick. Roderick! So he, is, he is crouched in the corner, like just breathing intensely, super heavy, and just drenched in sweat, and he's staring at his hands, and you can see that his heart rate is way up. Vivian casts Calm Emotions. I haven't prepared for this day, mm-hmm. but Calm Emotions was my domain spell that I had prepared the day before anyway. Mm. Then so. you still have access to it. Yeah. Uh, so it's not flavor? It's Shame. both. It's flavor yeah. and in the rules. Okay. It's so. the perfect combination. So So she's. So Vivian comes up, and she's... She, she's like, Roderick, Roderick, it's okay, it's okay. Whatever you're seeing, it's not real. And she's casting this honor and putting a hand on him. So based on the effects of the spell, Roderick's, uh, you know, his breathing slows and his his panic subsides. Um, does what he's seeing change as well? Yes, as the calm emotion spell takes a hold, the claws on your hands recede back to just normal hands. The sizzling stops on the, the symbol of Phirasma and the names start to vanish from the walls. This is not fair. This isn't... This isn't fair. I agree. It's not. It's evil. It's nothing to do with fair. Snoopy's a little cranky when she wakes up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I go to sleep expecting not to have my party ready to kill me. (laughs) Well, he didn't. We're good. No one's dead. In here. Right? She looks around. Is Dwarfy alive? (laughs) Dwarfy's alive. Dwarfy's there. He's still asleep. He didn't wake up. Yeah. Yeah, He's he's snoring. What did you (laughs) see and what did you hear, Roddy? Is the spirit planchette out on the desk, or is it still in my pack? Still in your bag. So Roderick, he he kind of like reaches and looks over on the desk where he saw the spirit planchette come out, and it's not there anymore. And so he kind of like looks at his hand again and looks around the room. It it was one of the the haunts again. I saw the planchette leave my pack and spell our doom. My name was on the wall again, and then I saw the light of the full moon coming through the windows and. It was as though I had transformed into a werewolf and had slain you all in your sleep. A werewolf? Yes, but apparently that is not. That was just an illusion. What did the planchette spell out? It said, "You will all die." <laughs> that was an easy prediction. It's correct. Didn't give you a timetable, did it? No, I don't believe it was that specific. That was not mm. the most prescient uh, moment, however. These things—they get into your head, as you know, Roderick. It's all lies. It's delusion. What I don't understand is how is it that the splatter man is causing this? How does he know what my fears are? How does he know what is going to get under my skin? This is this is your greatest fear, werewolves? I don't know if I would say it's my greatest fear, but werewolves took my father. And the very idea of becoming one, becoming the thing that my father was f- sworn to fight, is unthinkable to me. Well, I certainly understand that. How did he know that? I imagine while this is going on, you're kind of pacing, but Vivian's following you and trying to, like, dab your forehead. She's trying to keep you calm. Um, yeah, yeah and, and, and this has kind of been Roderick's thing, is he re- reacts to fear with anger. Mm-hmm. He gets mad about it. Mm-hmm. So as she's fussing over you, she she grabs your hand at one point and is looking at the scar. And you got that from the book, right? Yes. And she's just kind of looking at it, and she's she's rubbing your hand... Um, inspecting the scar, and she's like, he's connected to you, Roderick. Are you suggesting that he is reading my fears through the wound caused on my hand? Or my essence that was sapped into the book? Yes, yeah, something like that. I don't I don't know how, but I think 
I think he has a stronger read on you. It's what you're describing. Your visions are more personal than mine were. I've been through the academy. I was not unhinged by the skeletons or the ghosts or any of those things, but now he's coming after me personally. Well, you have his book. And you're coming after him personally, as are we all. Well, the sooner we get him, the better. I agree. Yes. Stupid plan. Did everyone get a full night's sleep, or do we still need to go back to bed? (laughs) Still need to go back to sleep. But before you can do that, the alarm starts going off. Oh, well, so that's alarming. Eh? Uh-huh. Uh, 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 no. Okay. Uh, At that, Roderick immediately draws his brand new masterwork longsword. And with that, we are rolling for initiative. Are you serious? I thought the what of Thurskill and Dwarfy? Are they awake? Well, I mean, the alarm woke them up. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. Dwarfy's definitely still prone because we said he was still asleep. By the way, Dwarfy's being played by Philip because we're at a new day. Kind of. New day. Ish. Halfway through the I day. thought this well, was flavor alarm going off. That's a waste. That's a natural 20 on initiative. I got to adjust the 20 on initiative for thirst skill. I guess it makes sense. Roderick's adrenaline is through the roof right now. Yeah. yeah that's true. He's on high alert. And a three for Dwarfy. Three for Dwarfy. It's fitting because he's, you know, still asleep. He was mm-hmm. asleep. Vivian. Nine. Nine. Zenobia. Fourteen. Fourteen. And Roderick. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. You start looking around the room, trying to figure out the source of the alarm, and you see this wispy, smoke-like creature come into the room, <sighs> and it's standing right in front of is that Vivian, Roderick, and Zenobia. Well, it's kind of right in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. And with that, Zenobia. And to be clear, you don't have your armor on. I sleep in my armor. You can't sleep in, you can't your, sleep armor. in your armor. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that, as it enters the room, does a 29 hit Zenobia? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. So. I mean, it would hit me with my armor yeah. on. So. Right. So it enters the room. It's like a wisp of the smoke flies at you as you take. As you take eight points of damage as you fly back into a wall. Whoa. How far? This room isn't very large, so he only flew back like about five, five feet. feet. Yeah, it's not a huge room, so you don't have very far to go. Oh, jeez. To hit the walls. So that was its exciting turn. Roderick. I have no idea what is going on. We were supposed to be safe in here. Yeah. What's up with that, Gary? You lied to us. You broke the rules. I did something. All right, I'm going to roll knowledge religion. Maybe you broke the barrier, Roderick. Or is it arcana? Religion or arcana to figure out what this is? This would be religion. Religion. Natural two. Oh, Richard. That is an 11. Burr, 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 burr. It's something. I have no idea what this is. Thank you, Roderick. That's very helpful. Maybe you could find out. So for his turn, Roderick is going to spend a arcane pool point as a swift action to magically enhance his new Masterwork Longsword. And he's going to use his spell combat ability to cast his remaining spell for the day, which he had Burning Hands prepared. And from where he is standing right now, he can actually get the creature without hitting any of his allies in the flame. Okay. So I'm going to need a reflex save. Uh, I would be happy to give that to you, except it is immune. So fire or magic? I don't know. Reflex saves. See, if I'd rolled higher than a two, I probably would have known that. Possibly. Anyway. Good thing that there's the spells from yesterday. Yeah, Roger takes his five foot step and swings. Natural seven. Uh, that That's probably not going to hit. Oh, Richard. Eleven. Yeah, that eleven won't hit. Sorry about it. But not really. I told you I wasted that twenty on initiative. <laughs> did, I not, did I not say? Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, it could have just been setting a precedent. It could have been. You could have been setting yourself up for the day. And Thurscale, you're up next. So what I'm gonna do is just swing at it with the axe. I'm five feet away, so I'm gonna pick up the axe. Do you have knowledge religion? I do. So I'll roll a knowledge religion check first. Ooh, that's a good one. Seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen. This is known as a smoke haunt, but it is not a haunt. It's just, it's called a haunt. It's only called a haunt, but it's not a haunt. It is an undead fire creature. So, okay, so I know what it is, and uh, that was a good die roll, so naturally, this is going to be a bad one. I agree. (laughs) No, 17 again. Oh, wow. There you go. So, 17 on the die plus 8 is 25. That'll hit. Let's see, so one... Did he learn anything else, just what it was? Uh, just what it is. It's got some spell-like abilities. Is it incorporeal? It is not incorporeal. That's what I wanted to know. Vulnerable to cold. Seven points of damage. (laughs) (laughs) 
Richard, Richard refuses Richard. to prepare cold spells. <laughs> I need to clarify something. My cold spell does non-lethal damage. Undead are immune to non-lethal damage you, anyway. You were going to one-shot it anyway. <laughs> you would have done I, damage. I would have never have hit it. So That's true. Anyway, okay, yeah. So, uh, seven points of damage. All right. How much did it go through? Did I, I see? It looks like all of it went Ayo. through. It's weird because it's it's a smoke like wispy creature, mm-hmm. but when you swing at it, it's like the blade sticks hmm. in it. Oh, uh, you know, there's chemistry behind that. Ooh, <laughs> thixotropic changes its viscosity. Yeah, ask the scientist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it reminds me it's of like, like you're walking in the fog and then you walk into a wall. Oh, it's like ketchup. So just hit it on the butt really hard. Yep. <laughs> and then use a butter flow. knife. <laughs> yeah. and then it'll flow. Just hit, hit the fifty-seven. Yeah, I was gonna say hit the fifty-seven. <laughs> All right. So next up is Zenobia. So I've been slammed against the wall. I shake it off. I arm myself with my mace. I study the uh, the thing. And I step in to hit it. And I can do that because I have quick draw. With their brand new magical my heavy My brand mace. new magic heavy Yay. mace. For a lot of reasons, I'm not going to put holy water on it. All right. All right. So. So a swing to hit. I bet this mace looks really pretty. Well, we've discussed this, and none of these things look like I want them to look. <laughs> looks like a very vicious Barbie. <laughs> Rick? What did I do? You got your I rolled on one. Oh, no. no. Well, to confirm... 12. 12. Plus, your 12 on the die. Plus, oh, 12 plus 7. 19. 19. So it is not a confirmed fumble. Ooh. We keep playing with danger Just on that one. We keep rolling these ones Mm-mm-mm. that we don't confirm. Barely. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. So that w- when you roll a natural one, you don't put any modifiers. That's just like... Yeah. A one is an automatic hit. Eat it. Yeah. All right. Just like a 20 is an automatic hit. Swing and a miss. I'm obviously still stunned from hitting the wall. <laughs> Vivian, you're up next. Uh, is there anything else I could learn with a religion roll? Not really. Okay. Anything else? It's not that spectacular. Like I said, it's got the immunity to fire. It's undead. It's weak to cold. And naturally, the only spell I had left was a fire spell. <laughs> it's got that strong slam attack that it did, mm-hmm. and it has certain spell-like abilities. Can I learn what those spell-like abilities are? Sure, you can try. Okay. Uh, just for the record, I realized I forgot to roll my will save for that arcane spell, Oh, but it yeah. didn't have an effect. So it didn't have an effect on it. Anyway. didn't matter. <laughs> Roger got scared of losing his magic when he cast that spell. Mm, for the record. 23. Uh, mm-hmm. So it can put things to sleep. Mm. It can cast suggestion. Mm, that's heat, creepy. Heat metal. Scorching oh. ray. Oh, yeah, we need to take this thing down. Jeez. Okay. Well, uh, partially because I really didn't think we were going to have a random encounter, and I'm a little salty about it. Uh, I had already erased all my spells from last time. And uh, partially because I don't think I had anything really left. Vivian is going to take a five-foot step back. I assume her mace, her mace, her glaive is somewhere nearby that she could grab. Yeah, it's probably within reach. And she's gonna slash, and she misses. Oh, it was a very exciting turn. It wasn't a, it wasn't a fail. It was a, I mean, it was, I rolled a five. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't a one. That's a miss. Mm-hmm. Swing and a miss. But she shares all that stuff. Dwarfy is up next, and we discussed he was still asleep, so he's prone. Mm-hmm. Yup. Okay, so he's prone, but I mean, he can stand up without provoking. Correct. He's far enough away. So Dwarfy is going to uh, stand up from prone Mm -hmm. and then draw his hammer uh, and then wait for his turn again. All right. What does Dwarfy sound like when he wakes up? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so like Father (laughs) Grimbro. Not as old as Father Grimbro. He actually holds the hammer upside down, where it's just the stick part. (laughs) Five more minutes. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, so back to the top of the order. So one thing you all notice is the smoke creature disappears. You can't see oh, see shit. it anymore. And I need everybody to make a fortitude save. What? Gary. Uh, 21. 18. 16 save? 16 does not save. Okay. Their skill is affected. Vivian fails with a 9. All right. Dwarfy is 22. All right, so Vivian and Thurskill need you now to make a wisdom save. Wisdom. Wisdom or will? It's just wisdom. What is a wisdom? It's it will. Just okay. go with will. <laughs> I'm sure this is one of those 3.5 things that was never converted. Okay. You'll find those every once in a while. No, I felt that. 19. 19. Two. All right, so the two of you are filled with the feeling of 
warmth and complacency, Even and now. you're very, very happy. Oh, that's an email. <laughs> as you take six points of damage. What? Both of us? Both of you. That's a very strange uh, effect. Like total? So three and three? Mm-hmm. So three and three. <laughs> nice <Each> try. <laughs> Carol card. It's too late for that, Philip. I'm so tired. <laughs> Can't make math jokes for with me around. Like, what? <laughs> so that was exciting and fun. That's weird. That's not fun, but uh, you know what? There's girls having a great time. Mm-hmm. He's all happy and warm. Feels warm and cozy. Roderick, you are up next. Roderick is going to draw holy water, and he's going to ready an action to throw it if this thing appears. Okay. Thurskill. Can I do anything? Depends on what you want to do. I mean, I want to swing my uh, magical axe at it, but I can't because I don't know where it is. It's invisible. Mm-hmm. Can you detect it in any way? I'm not magical right now. I'll be magical later. Right now, I'm not. So... So, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull out that holy water and just, you know, look at it and swish it around in my hands. Give it a sniff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a snifter. <laughs> and, and do the same thing that he's doing. All right. Zenobia. Mm. I'm going to hold my action. Do you want to ready, ready anything, or are you just... Yeah, I'll, really? I'll quick draw um, a holy water. Okay. Man, you have such a crunchy character, Mom. It's so funny. So if she quick draws, and if she, if she was going to hold her action, she couldn't couldn't really do it that she, way. She couldn't it. quick draw, put it on her on her weapon. Yes, yeah, she could. And, and then hold it, and then hold my action. Doesn't that take... You could, you could ready an action to attack. Doesn't that... I feel like it's one, two a- action too many. Swift move standard. Okay. All right, then. I'm going to go ahead, then, and pour it on my yeah. mace. Yeah. So she's readying the swift and the move, and she's... No, she used, I mean, she's, 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 she's using the swift and the move and readying the standard action. Oof, yeah. Yes. So okay. crunchy. That's a Nature Valley granola bar, so crunchy. <laughs> and dry. Very, mm-hmm. very, very dry. Very dry. So if it appears this turn, I get to swing it. Yes. If it yes. appears within your melee range. If it doesn't, then you can't swing at it. Mm-hmm. Correct. And I can't move at this point until next turn. Correct. Otherwise, you're, you wouldn't be readying anything. Right. Okay. You're right. ready to move, <laughs> but that's not shut doing up. anything. Shut yeah. up, Richard. <laughs> Sorry, I'll shut that up. That doesn't now. help. Okay. Yes. Anyway. It's my turn. Such a Vivian. It's my turn. I Can I spellcraft on WTF just happened? Sure. 11. I'm sure that did it. You have no idea what that was. Do I still feel it? Like mm-hmm. So, like, did the feeling go away? No, you still feel the warmth. Does anyone else just feel so nice and warm and cozy? No, you're being haunted. No, no, I get it. I totally get it. I just feel so You nice. guys are being affected by this. Stop it. What? I mean, you're really cranky when you wake up. That's she is. Boy, you haven't even seen me angry. <laughs> yeah, Vivian's just going to stand there. She's not writing anything. <laughs> okay. There's Kyle's a stupid smile on his face. Dorothy is up next. Holy strike is what Dorothy is going to do. All right. And what does that do? Um... I don't know. What's it to you, Richard? <laughs> I can touch uh, the, my weapon and bless it. Uh, and it's the power of purity and goodness for one minute. It glows green, uh, deals an additional 1d6 of damage against evil creatures. Uh, during this time, it's treated as good for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction. Yeah. I mean, all it does is make it glow green. Yep. And do what an extra shade? 1d6 damage. Yeah, well, yeah. What, what shade of green? Huh? What shade of green? Well, I mean, it says it says here, uh, weapon glows green, white, or yellow, gold. What color? I just picked green. <laughs> it's like grass. <laughs> what are you do? Oh, super green. Um, super green. The velvet. Bring it back around. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, what? Did you just make a caca noise? <laughs> super green. No. Just, what just, color green? <laughs> oh, what color green? I didn't hear what you said. At the, at the end what of the What kind of green? What kind of green? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so we're all waiting for this thing to come yeah, back. Well, yep. Dwarfy was at the bottom of the order, so there's no more. I mean, there's no more. We waiting. all lost our turn because <laughs> nobody did anything. No, we still have our action ready. Yeah, I guess, but I mean, but at this point, it's just going to go in the order of uh-huh. action economy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, order of initiative. Anyway, back to the top of the order. No, this is good because we all go before, like the next time it appears. As soon as it appears, all of us are ready. Bam, 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 bam. And then now we're ahead of it in the initiative. Hmm. Is that how that works? I love that it yep. was, we lost our, our. No, you go right before. Gotcha. If it appears. If it appears, it could also just leave. Mm-hmm. It might. If you're if you're bored, Gary, it could just leave. It's possible, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, at this point, got a lot of options there. Because he hasn't left yet. Well, leaving is an option. Mm-hmm. Leaving is never an option. Roderick. Of course it's me. It's a 19 hit. Of course it does. So, Roderick, you're flung back against the wall this time. 
you flung into... Can we see what direction it came from, Gary? You don't see it exactly. You just know he is pushed straight back, just like you were pushed straight back last time. Kind of looks like the same area that it was in before. Basically. Wow. Okay. Stop rolling dice. Yeah, it's a lot of dice. (laughs) You take eight points of damage as you fly back into the wall, and you crash into the desk and a couple of other papers and all that other stuff. That hurt a lot. Did it appear? It didn't appear, but like I said, you have an idea of where it might be. Okay. Does that make it my turn now? It does make it your turn. I'm going to throw the holy water at that spot. Okay. So rolling the d20 first. Mm Mm-hmm. That's not bad. That is a 15. 15 will at least hit the square. Yeah. It's it's touch AC, so... Yeah. So am I rolling concealment, or...? Uh, 15 does not hit touch AC. Okay, so it takes one point of splash damage. Does it? Maybe. No. Do we hear a sizzle? Maybe. <laughs> really? Gary's being hurt. coy as fuck. Random encounter and invisible and coy as fuck. And I, I just threw in this random encounter because I wanted to prolong book one a little bit longer. <laughs> this is an invisible what? creature, Gary. You're going to prolong it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to eat up some you want of our entire, materials. You want this entire episode to be this combat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I took that one point. Thurskel would be next. He's having a great time. Uh, he's just going to stand there with his water and his axe and just chill. All right. Just chilling. Because he can't hit anything. He can't see anything. Zenobia. I can step and swing in that space that it looked like this originated from. Because I know where Roderick was, right? Yes. So the rules for that one is you roll a total concealment roll. So you roll it to hit it. And then you also roll a 50% chance and if you're swinging at the correct square and roll above 50, you hit, you hit it normally. So, roll your d20 first. And that's a plus seven. seven. Plus seven. And you have holy water on. So, uh, it's 19 to hit. Yeah. A 19 would hit, so roll your concealment. So that's your percentage die. And you need to get it above a 50. 66. Yes. Ooh, All right. She hits. So roll your damage. All right. She hit so, it? Yes. Oh, this is good. Well, I hit it. Yeah, you hit it. No, you hit it. Yes. You so hit. my new mace has 1d8 plus 3 because it's magical. It's 5 plus 3 is 8. And then your holy water. Plus 1 because I studied. That's 9. And then the holy water is 2d4. Correct. 7. Oh, wow. So 16. So 16 total. 7 of which was... Holy. Holy water. So what you notice when you go to swing this time, you're just swinging at that that space. It's almost as if the mace slows down, like it's going through like this oh. viscous substance in that area. So cool. And it takes all of that damage. That is so cool. And then it suddenly appears before us. You actually, because of that distortion to it, you can see exactly where it is. It's still kind of invisible, but it's... Uh-huh. It's warped the the light in wow. that spot, so you can see exactly its its figure and wow. their skill yes. ghosts. I take back all the mean things I said. <laughs> <laughs> can their skill go now? Yeah, their skill swings his magical axe. Uh, that's a natural eighteen. Ooh, yes. Does he have to roll concealment of any sort? No, because you know where it's at. Very cool. This is a cool creature. I've never heard of this before. The not hot hunt. I forgot to take notes. What's it called? Uh, 26. So 26. that's a hit. That's definitely a hit. It's called a smoke haunt. But it's not a haunt. But yeah. it's not a haunt. It's an undead. Uh, minimum damage, five points. Five points of damage? Better than no damage. All right. Next up is Vivian. It just occurred to me why there would be a creature like this. We could, again, fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah. There was Super. a fire. There was a fire here once. Um, Say that once slowly and then think about cult spells. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Richard. Um, I guess Talk to me at level four. <laughs> I guess she will follow suit and pull out a holy water and throw it. All right. Um, she's like, oh, no, man, I'm feeling really good, but... Hit it. That seems... In- okay. Here's some holy water. Blessings abound. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing it like Wait. cornhole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> It, sh- it gets the splash damage. I'm sure that hit it fully. So one point of splash damage. It does and take that one point. And he dies. Nope. Still kicking. And Dwarfy is up next. 
Well, Dwarfy has just uh, lit up his hammer. It looks very impressive. Oh, it's yes. super green. It's the best super green. green. Super green. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. This element. Element. Mm. Chris, mm. Chris oh, Tucker. Okay. <laughs> it's been a minute. It's green. Super green. Oh, it's like emerald green. Super, any kind of green. Super, any, any kind any, of green. Any kind of green. <laughs> The only part I remember is when the ugly guys push the button on the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's not going to do it. That is not going to do it. Twelve. Twelve will not hit. Womp womp. Womp womp. We do not do well just being woken up and jumping into battle. That's the lesson. We're all very grumpy. We've got sleepies in our eyes. That is true. Now we're back to the top of the order, but since you guys all delayed and went, it's now saying you're at the top of the order. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Roderick. All right, spell combat, spell strike. I got to roll that will save, though. You do, which All we right. didn't do last time, but you, the spell didn't do anything anyway. Uh, 14? 14. I think you're fine to cast a spell. Okay, good. I think we found the DC, guys. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, so that was Brand, so he's going to step forward and make both attacks. All right. And for funsies, I'm going to roll both at the same time. Ooh. Ooh getting wild. And this, this one's... Do you take one. a penalty for two-handed rolling? <laughs> yes, he rolls natural ones. That was a super nerdy joke, Mama. <laughs> That's pretty good. Hero card. Natural two, which is a miss, but a natural eighteen should hit, I'd assume. Did with their scale. That natural two will miss, but the second attack Natural eighteen. Natural eighteen will hit. So explain to our listeners why you got to roll twice on that one. Okay, so the Magus has two signature abilities that work together. There's spell combat, which allows the Magus to cast a spell and make all of his attacks in the same turn as a full round action. And then spell strike is the other ability, which allows the Magus to cast a touch spell and deliver that touch spell through his weapon. And when you cast a touch spell, you get a free touch attack as part of casting the spell, which is how you can cast a spell and make a touch attack in the same turn normally. The Magus can use that free touch attack as an additional attack in the full round action. So, one attack is the regular attack for the round, and then another attack which is granted to the Magus by casting Spell Strike and the Touch Spell. That's crazy. So, if you had failed your will save, then you wouldn't have been able... You could only have attacked once. Because I couldn't the have spell attacked at all. Do. That's that specific issue with Roderick that doesn't have anything to do with the Magus mechanics, but it depends on what order, I guess, but it's possible I could end up doing nothing that round. Okay. Well, that's crazy and complicated, and... It is, uh, but go ahead and roll for damage. Yeah. All right, do to do Of course, a two on the D8, so <laughs> that is seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. All right. At least I hit. If you could tell how this thing looked, you would be able to tell it's not looking so good. That's what you get for interrupting our sleep. <laughs> we are very cranky. <laughs> Thurskill's not. He's happy. <laughs> Zenobia. Oh, it's like Christmas to him. <laughs> Do they have Christmas in Galarian? I'm sure they have some equivalent. They have something, I'm sure. Going to hit it again with my inoculated heavy mace. All right. That is plus seven, uh, 19. That'll hit. Keep hitting it just on the nose. Yes. Even her mediocre rolls work. <laughs> Eight plus nine, ten, eleven, plus one for studying, twelve. Is that max damage? Yes. Woo. So, plus a uh, 2d4. One is it four. weak to holy water because it's fire? <laughs> 1d4, because I've lost one on the floor. <laughs> so that's... 1d4 where, where on was the floor. I? Two, I don't know. 2d4. It was... Uh, 12? You're 12. at 12. 14. Uh, <laughs> 4. Um, so 18. 18 total points of damage? Yes. So with this one, you're ready for this thing to just be gone. So you do an overhand strike, striking down... And as you hit it over the top, it slowly, that viscous, just separates into this ash. Good, uh, it like disperses. It just disperses and fades away. Uh, like like when you have like a like a solution in water and like it kind of like... And how do Thurskill and Vivian feel? You suddenly feel weaker. Like you didn't notice that you had taken damage before, mm. but now it's all hitting that you took some damage. Can Roger roll a spellcraft to see what happened? Sure. Now I get the natural 19. It's a, <laughs> Was that 28? Uh, it has a supernatural ability known as life drinking, so where it absorbs the heat from your body. You didn't mention that one, Gary. <laughs> so now do we feel cold? No, you don't really feel cold. You just feel weak. So like a- I'm fatigued after I raged. Pretty much. It is such a weird creature. I'm just going to go back to bed, you guys. Um... I don't really want to heal us right now. <laughs> that will be fine in the morning. Let's go to sleep. Okay. Roderick resets the alarm stone. <laughs> All right. 
reset the alarm stone. And it goes off. Does he continue his watch, or does somebody switch off with him? I'm going to watch. I'm not going to be going to sleep. Yeah, I was going to say, Roderick wants to continue his watch, because he's not going to bed right now with the adrenaline running. Keeps looking at his hands. I'm putting my armor on. To be clear, I do want to go to sleep eventually and finish my eight hours, but uh, not right now. <laughs> well, Vivian's going to go back to sleep, but she's going to kind of settle Roderick in wherever he's sitting, like you know, wrap a blankie around him, put, <laughs> put a put one of those uh, ice packs on his head, <laughs> um, and she's just going to. Where say, is she going to get ice? I don't know. She's going to make. Nobody's it. got any cold spells prepared. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, non-lethal damage. It won't hurt undead. Figure something else out. Um, well, it'll hurt him. It just won't kill him. No, it, they're immune to non-lethal damage. Uh, Sorry, that's I, what he's saying. Yeah. 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 Well, you didn't say that He part. did say that part. Well, I wasn't listening. Okay. <laughs> I was, that matters. <laughs> so, before Vivian goes to bed, she's going to get... She's going to make sure Roderick's settled, and um, she's mothering him a little bit, and she just she's going to say, Remember, Roderick, it, it was it's not real, and we're going to win, so it'll be okay. And then she kind of goes into her little sleeping bag and falls asleep looks glamorous and Roderick's kind of like the like like little boys when they're mad that they're sick and they don't want to be mm-hmm. that, that's him right now yeah so you're not going to heal before you go to bed even though you'll get all your healing back tomorrow morning I can't remember how much healing I used but I'm pretty sure I used it all fair enough like I was just assuming we that can I was stay in this out. we can stay here for a day too if we need oh healing. no 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 but we, we we're on a on clock it. yeah yeah we were talking about that too um we don't know what the state is at the memorial but last we saw there were six no there were four letters left there were six was, written okay and there were four left <laughs> and it takes Who about, cares about what was written and he's doing them about one every three days well I learned that it, that's not necessarily true. It could vary. I understand that. But the last rate we were aware of was about every three days they mm-hmm. were appearing. Right. So I feel like we're not under the gun, like we have to do it tomorrow. We have some time to play it safe. But at the same time, we still have a sense of urgency that we don't want to We for, don't want to risk it. For a time reference, uh, it was for Ask the First when it, there were four letters left. Which once we wake up in the morning, that will be two days ago. Yeah, we're about to wake into... For us, the third. So, um, worst case scenario, we have three remaining. Worst case scenario, we have two days left. Like, if it was just one day at a time. Yes. But it was never that. <laughs> worst case scenario. Worst case is scenario. <laughs> two days. That there's w- a letter a day. Yeah. That's the worst case. Yeah. So, I think we could do like a channel or two just to get us all up in the morning mm-hmm. and go. Yeah. We'd have to play that conservatively. Yeah. I'll channel in the morning, but I'm I'm assuming I don't we have, have potions any healing. too. I mean, yeah, I'm not bad. I'm just three down. Mm-hmm. Roderick channel is will not, do us. And Roderick is nine down, but he could probably get a fervor from Dwarfy if the channel yeah. doesn't do it. All right, so you make it through the rest of the night unaffected. No more alarms. No more alarms going off. No more weird haunt not haunts and i was thinking that thing was smoky but you said it had it took a viscous form when it made contact so i imagine it probably nudged the alarm just a, just enough to get it to go off just enough so do remember uh, as you do wake up you do heal a little bit overnight mm-hmm. uh, per the rules of pathfinder you're only supposed to get your level back in healing but me being the benevolent gm that i am <laughs> i am also going to allow you to take uh, plus your con modifier as well. Ever benevolent. Mm. So, so I'm back up to full now after that. I'm still down three. I'm only down two. I'm down three. I don't know. I think we should tough it out. One channel. Come on. Just oh. one. Do you think so? I don't know. It's early no. in the day. No. I don't think that we should. Yeah, I think we should tough it out. I yeah. honestly do. Because, I mean, she could roll a six right now and that'd be wasted. Mm-hmm. Well, but- you have like seven though, right? Yeah. I'm just saying. We got a lot of undead we need to face. How much? Hey, that's how, your character. How many potions are people carrying? Well, you know what? That's I have two cure Well, you books. know what? That's a valid point. Vivian's a healer first, so she's going to channel. Because <laughs> I've got t- two cure light wounds. Now nah, let's save those. Those are way. You are not down enough for that. Well, not for three points. No. <laughs> two points. <laughs> I'm only down one now. I'm at full. Exactly what he needed. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm at full okay. too. All right. So is only down one. So you're all healed up now, ready for the day. Another exciting day in the halls of Harrowstone. Mm-hmm. I'm so over this place. Yep. You don't want to just move. You know in what here I would do stay. to this place? Burn it. Burn it <laughs> <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> you know me, Gary. <laughs> you know it's like looking back on it. I understand it now. It makes sense. <laughs> 
Okay, so, so we're in pretty good shape. We're in pretty good shape. Uh, the room is from this creature coming in and flinging people around. The room is a little in shambles, so you kind of have to dig through stuff to find all of your belongings. <laughs> to get can we ready. tidy up, too? By the way, can we figure out how it got in there? Yeah. Sure. Is there a roll thought, I can do? I thought this was a safe space. Roll an arcana. That's a natural, too, so. Oh, I can roll Oh, arcana. I can roll it, too. Cool. Smart me for putting points in that. It's a 10 for those who are curious. Natural 18. 22. 22. 24. 24. Uh, So with those, you would realize that it was able to come through. It was essentially like it was summoned by the mark on your hand. (gasps) So, Roderick, you're going to sleep outside. (laughs) That's crazy. So it's Roderick who did it or Zenobia? What? No. No, the, the mark was... But wait. she's branded, too. Oh, that's a good point. Um, oh. No, not that mark. But it, it didn't come from that brand. You know this this came from the brand in Roderick's hand. So, I figure we've, maybe we're looking at the doorknob first, like looking at the lock. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Vivian's kind of exploring the, I don't know, arcanic resonance that's hanging out, magic resident, resonance. And she comes over again and grabs Roderick's hand, and she, like, taps his hand. And she's like, came from you, Roderick. No, that's what it is. Roderick didn't know. That's what my natural two is, because he was... It couldn't have been him. So he was looking at any <laughs> other op- alternative, what it could have been. It's like, well, it can't be me, so what is it? But it was confusing, because you didn't see that same magical resonance coming through the door. Like, it never came through the doorway. Uh, um, well, you're sleeping outside. I don't think that makes it better. No. It does for us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this, this, that's okay, Ron. The sooner we take care of this, the sooner everything, everything will be fine. <laughs> so, so Thurskill is uh, because he knows it came from your hand. His wheels are turning. All I don't like that look on your face. <laughs> He's not going to say it out loud because it would it would disturb everybody. But he is thinking about how to kill Roderick, separate the evil from Roderick. Chavez hand off. Uh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Idle hands. Idle hands. <laughs> um, he's not, you know, it, this is a last resort, but he is learning that this, this thing on, on Roderick is starting to affect the party, and that's not good. Well, in like seven levels, we get access to regenerate, and then we could do it then. <laughs> well, he's not talking about in seven levels. If, <laughs> if it gets worse, you may have to deal with their skills. Uh, brand new axe. <laughs> it's easier just to make him sleep outside. I mean, Thurskill's <laughs> lobbing axe. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But then but, you'd become the evil that you're fighting. No, because he didn't lop his head. It's just his hand. He can get like a prosthetic. Where? I don't know. He could like glue a knife to it or something. You know, like Walking like, Dead. Or the- yeah, Magus with one hand. That sounds like a really fun character to play. It's not. It's 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 not like something that he's going to do tomorrow. But it's something that he's thinking that he's he's like psyching himself up to do. It. If he has to do it, he's going to do it. Rude. Super so, rude. So does Roderick say anything as Vivian is pointing out the ugly truth? He's like. This was supposed to help. This is causing more problems than it's solving. You know, it just gets it gets worse before it gets better. Uh, like, this thing was stuck in my hand before. I thought I was going to have to cut my hand off because it was evil. <laughs> but <laughs> now it turns I out <laughs> I it's the best thing ever. So, you know what? We'll give it a, you know, a couple days. If not, who knows? <laughs> I didn't catch what you did right away. It was a delayed reaction on my part. Uh, I'm going to roll sense motive. <laughs> Uh, 11. You probably didn't pick up on it. Yes, I think that is the the light at the end of the tunnel is that you were able to drop the axe after we killed the lopper, yeah. so... So, yeah, let's let's find this son of a bitch and get him. Indeed. I agree. Who wants breakfast? This is getting I mean, exhausting. did you bring anything? Cause... I brought some leftover rations of rabbit bacon. Ooh. Here we go. <laughs> la, 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 la. And she's, like, making a little picnic before we go out. She makes a nice little breakfast before you leave the room. Mm-hmm. You're all picking up all of your items that were strewn across the floor and tidying up a little bit mm-hmm. in the warden's office. Oh, Vivian's tidying up everything. Again, Snow White. Da, 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 da. Uh, Thurskill, as you were moving rubble over trying to find your axe and other things that are strewn across the room, you see a small little glimmering object on the ground. They're still easily distracted by shiny objects. Oh, absolutely. So he squints at it, and he's gonna try and touch it? Just, like, rub it? And he's kinda, like, flick almost like a paper piece. Like a... It's just under the dust. They're acting out the action right now. Yeah, Yeah, you can't can't really see it. (laughs) 
<laughs> so yeah, they're just poking the table a bunch. <laughs> it's very rude. <laughs> so yeah, so he he uh, he does that, and and what happens? Nothing happens. Just just keep flicking it a few times, and he tries to pick it. You know, pinch. You know, pinch. Pick it up mm-hmm. like it's a lightning bug. <laughs> you pinch it. You're so descriptive. Flat, it's flat, so you can't get it. So you have to like sweep it off the table. <laughs> so pinch it. You're able to grab it. Pick it up out of the the dust. That is there, and you realize it's a glowing harrow card. Ooh. A glowing hey, harrow card. You guys, I found one of those harrow cards. You did? Yes. Oh, Thushka, that's wonderful. It is, but it's super scary. Oh, what is it? It's called The Lost, and it's this guy, and he's a looks like a goblin monster with a winged helm. It's uh, This might be a bad omen, you guys. Ooh. Oh. That's, that's horrifying. <laughs> oh, that's 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 quite alarming. Yes, I agree. Hey, Sco, can anybody ask for Asthma real quick? What this does? <laughs> hey, yo, for Asthma, what does this do? Uh, can, can Albert Einstein come back? <laughs> Albert Einstein. No, be the be the goblin on the card. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a goblin. Though. I was going to say, I don't think it's a goblin. <laughs> it looks goblin-y to it me. It's kind of a lich-looking thing. It looks like one of the goblins from Labyrinth. So, this card, it's known as The Lost, is the chaotic evil card of wisdom. Hmm. And it's part of the star's suit. It has a bodak on it, which represents the permanently insane, lost <laughs> among lunatics and psychopaths in insane asylums. Very appropriate. It it's a, the artwork. It is a card of emptiness. Wow. It's very appropriate for where we are. Exactly. So what does it do? It's a stars. What, is, what did the stars do? This does the same thing Albert did. It does. So It, it allows, tells us something? It allows you, at any point you feel stuck, to trade that in and ask the GM for assistance. Ooh. So we could ask about the book. <laughs> Again. <laughs> no, our, our first answer was shit, so... Yeah, yeah, no, don't ask about the book. <laughs> sure it'll be better the second time. <laughs> sure it'll be way less terrifying with a... Bo- with a monster. Bo- Bodart? Bodak? Bodak. Bodak? Bodak Horseman? I always rated it as Bodak. But... Bodak. Bodak. Bodak Horseman? <laughs> it is... Thank you, I was going to make the joke until someone left. And... <laughs> emaciated creature that appears charred or dried and its empty eye sockets seep trails of smoke this, as a medium extra planar undead. This card is very appropriate for where we are, Thurskill, but it does not necessarily have to be interpreted as a, a bad omen. Remember, these are a gift from Phrasma. Uh, <sighs> Did she keep the receipt? <laughs> uh, I don't know how great her sense of humor is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a Ragathil kind of guy. I don't know who that is. That's my god. Oh, sh- <laughs> He's really Thanks more of so an imperial sensitive. lord than a god, but we worship him as such. Noel doesn't know anything about him. It's not the kind of god that I I, I make girly characters. <laughs> it's a long way away from Shaylin. Yeah. He's a vengeance god. Mm. He's a All vengeance right. demon. God. Justice god. All right. Let's go. Well, do you want to use the card right now, Thurskill? I don't. I, I think I'm going to hold it. Do okay. we have a question? I think we know what to do. I mean, yeah, so we're, we're not s- really stuck right now. We need to go find uh, could ask two which more room. monsters. You could ask which room the Splatterman's in. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really stuck, though. That's just something I want to know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it one, there is one way to find out for sure. Is go in the room. Explore. Explore. I want to make bets. We, we have two rooms left in the dungeon. We have a uh, presumably what's going to be a big room based on the you know the, the, the layout. Map. Yeah, the layout. And then there's a smaller room. So the, the two areas, fancy names... The Nevermore. Reaper's Hold and the Nevermore. Mm-hmm. So Which my bet's Reaper's Hold. Reaper's Hold is the big one. Yeah, I think Reaper's Hold is the big one, but I think the Splatterman's going to be in the Nevermore. That's my prediction. Opposite. I, I think, think. I think Nevermore. I think Book One is more obvious. So I think that the uh, the big room. Yeah. All right. So we're split down the middle. The big room is the big bad. Where are we going to go? Well, so what? Which one do you think the Splatterman's in? I think he's in the uh, Nevermore. Oh, so we are split down the middle. So, and I can say this in character, but if we go to the Reaper's End first and leave the Nevermore, we're just leaving an empty, uh, an unexplored room behind us. So you think we should go to the Nevermore first? Yes. I, th- I think we should go to, yeah, I think it makes sense either way, but I I just, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the big baddie is, is all I'm saying. Um, can I, can I see the money we got yesterday? The money? Yes, here. Thank you. What's you gonna do with the money? That money? 
money yeah yeah um benevolent gm is being benevolent again and i'm gonna use the gold equivalent to as uh, she's preparing her spells to prepare um consecrate i imagine while she's preparing her spells she's kind of praying and she's got the gold and it turns into the silver dust that she'll need that's exactly what happens it, yeah it's almost as like if it, it turns into like this gold dust in her hands that just transforms to silver oh that's so cool <laughs> like we just said it but it's just like that's just a uh, imagery and it's doing that tv thing where like when she's playing with the powder in her hand you see like the glint on every every yeah. so often like that catches in the yeah. camera and you just see it change you, like you just see this color shift it's just so cool mm-hmm. very did, magical i didn't know you were an alchemist uh, the gods have many powers and are gracious gracious enough to bless them on us mm. so they let some of them out on loan <laughs> they like gold don't they that's true especially uh, especially abadar he's quite a fan of gold when you sacrifice gold, that's how they know you really mean it. <laughs> so Vivian prepares her spells, and she and she and Dwarfy, and maybe Dwarfy enjoyed this, but they were powwowing together, deciding what to what to pray for <laughs> t- <laughs> together. Um, he, may, it, he may have gotten distracted a little bit, <laughs> staring. She's got some some glitter left over on her from all this alchemical uh, power. Man, Gary's given me a look. He's given me <laughs> he's given me a Dwarfy look. <laughs> Acting. <laughs> So I think we're good. Um, I don't think there's anything that we'd want to cast before we get down there, except that Vivian will continue to do her uh, guidance buffing of Roderick on the way down. Well, if you wanted, you can give him resistance instead. Or I'm sorry, never mind. You probably didn't repair that. No, I did. No, I have resistance. I have both guidance and resistance. I I was wondering which one would be more useful. Resistance gives you plus one to saves for the entire duration, not just one save. Mm. Okay. And since it's a save, he's worried about. I mean, Dwarfy can give you resistance, too. We both should, because he, he needs to be buffed Can we that, stack right? it? Can we do guidance <laughs> and resistance? Well, that's two different spells, so it should stack, right? Could be great. Vivian could be slapping one butt cheek, and Dwarfy could be slapping the other. <laughs> totally confusing, Roderick. <laughs> Especially, yeah, there's different heights. <laughs> different pressures. Yeah, so guidance and resistance both stack, because one is a resistance bonus, and one is a competence bonus. Oh, so fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, so both will work. All right, so... So that means you have, you're have you more likely to pass the will save that you have to. Yeah, I have an additional plus two. So you have to roll a will save every time you cast a spell now? An arcane spell, yes. Yeah. Which this are will the only, only help them on the first round, basically. But uh, hey. but I think it's good. No, well, he, says, he says resistance keep going. keeps going. Yeah. It'll go for a full minute. Oh, cool. Yep, the, the guidance only lasts until I use it, though. Oh, I thought the resistance faded after. You nope. just said all this, but I've already forgotten it. I'm ready to fight something. So, oh, yes. so 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 that so going down we will and double stack that. Roderick's trying to steal himself after the really rough night he's had. Mm-hmm. And Vivian's going to be talking to him, and whether or not he's listening, <laughs> she's just going to be rambling and saying like, "Well, it's just it's going to be great." And you know, um, it's not that night- nightmares like this are normal, but it's it's probably normal for this type of situation. And you know what? You're going to get over it, and it's going to be fine. I've dealt with something similar, and she's just going to keep going on. She's like, "But it's going to be great, Vivian." You know? <laughs> what? Quiet. Okay. And for the record, we are looking around as we're going to make sure that nothing has gone weird overnight. Everything appears the same as it was. Is Roderick last having night. any more visions as he goes through? Not at the moment. Uh, That's a relief. And then by this time, I'm sure we've gotten back to the to the training room. Yep, back to the, the elevator shaft. Back to the training room. So while people are arguing about the best way to cheer up Roderick, he's just in the process of tying up the rope to the to the uh, <laughs> to the post so they can get down, and he's setting his alarm stone right on it so that way they could hear if anybody messes with it. Mm-hmm. He really likes the alarm stone a lot. Are you talking to it? Why don't you marry it? You're my best friend, alarm stone. <laughs> <laughs> That's the code. Nobody nobody understands me like you. <laughs> That's the code that you have to say. <laughs> You'll never let me down. <laughs> let me tell you about my best, best friend. <laughs> um, I kind of want to fast forward through the climb down just because I don't want to deal with the embarrassment of Vivian. So go ahead and just take the damage now. I, yeah, I had an image. I had an image of us just like tying her to the end of the rope and just throwing her down like a yo-yo. <laughs> yeah. doing, but doing. I mean. We like know, unwinding. we have more information now. We know that this is how the Lopper died, being dropped down this elevator shaft. Not this elevator shaft, no. But a, I thought it was this one. No, it was the... I thought there was only one. No, it's the Opulet. No, it was the, the, the solitary pit in on the Opulet. Ob- ob- ah. Well, there's no one thinking about it anyway. Oubliet. Because, I mean, he's tied to the axe. Unless you're in France, and then it's Oublier. 
I looked this up. (laughs) I thought, have we been mispronouncing it the whole episode? But the the American pronunciation is Obliette. I'm going with the labyrinth pronunciation. Yeah. Well, we're in America, so we'll lose the American pronunciation. America! I don't know where Labyrinth Land is. Nor do I. Upside down, maybe? Kind of. M.C. Escher Land, at least. Hmm. Alrighty. So, um... All right. So we what, just get we get down what, there. What no problem. No climb checks. Damn. I, I'm assuming it'll take the time to throw Vivian down gracefully. Yeah. We all aid Vivian. That's what we do. <laughs> so we're down the hole. Yes. So you've made it back down. Vivian to the dungeon climbed level. perfectly. She had no problem whatsoever. With lots of help. <laughs> it was. It, and now I'm thinking of like the Adam West Batman climbing on the walls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine like that backwards. Like that's how you let her down. And then Sammy Davis Jr. pops out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, so we're back in the room with the with the water that had the weird ectoplasmic zombie things. Yes. Correct. And we can roll reception if we need to, but basically I think we want to get back to the main intersection. Yeah, all if, the nothing is, if nothing's changed since the last time we were here, we move on. Nothing's changed. Maybe check on the uh, lopper's bones. <laughs> they moved. They're like two centimeters to the left. Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it. All right, so now we're in the intersection hallway, and we went to the Obulet, Ubulet, uh, which was to the north last time. So now we're going to go to the Evermore, which was Nevermore, and Nevermore. Quoth the Raven. Quoth the Raven, which is to the south. And my bet is Splatterman is in here. So. I think it's the moss, nah, the mossy mess. I'm betting Splatterman also. My bet is either Marauders here or there's no boss here. You mean they're both in that big room? Oof, that'd be terrible. Yeah. I mean, but we fought two at a time before. We did. And, and you had a, Philip had a theory off, off mic. I did have a theory off mic that I think that maybe the Splatterman is not a ghost or a haunt. He survived and he's just living down here. Yeah, you're saying he's not even undead. No. He, somehow he found a way to survive. Yep. Through magic. Mm. Through magic, through whatever. I mean, just because he doesn't have that book doesn't mean he doesn't have a book. He's got a ring of sustenance or something? <laughs> Maybe. Or he's just eating rats. Ugh. I mean, there's lots of them. We They bit my feet. The romantic part of me thinks He it's has really cool. rope. He could have gotten out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he's been in the town the whole time. It's Father Grimbro. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought of that. Yeah. I thought we're going to find Father Grimbro. You know, when they when we rip off the mask of the, uh, the whispering way, Father Grimbro is going to be leading it. Luckily. And, you, and you're Fred from Scooby-Doo. Luckily. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so we're going th- through this hallway to the south. Uh, sh- shall we roll perception? Uh, before we do that, uh, cast light on something for Zenobia. I don't know what you want your light on. Do it like a lantern fish. Or an angler fish. <laughs> She's got a little... I like that. Yeah, she does one of her, <laughs> what, like a, a bundle of hair forward, like yeah. a forward ponytail or something stupid. Just blinds her. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the light situation, Gary? It is rather dark down here, because there's no ambient light coming in from outside. All there's right. no windows. Vivian's gonna need light anyway, so... But she doesn't need as much light as much as you do. Before we go in, before we do any perceptions, Vivian's gonna cast light on Zenobia's shield. Alright. Light is cast, so you have light going into the south hallway. Uh, you see it looks very similar to the hallway to the north, and that there is that room off to your left in the same spot that there was the room uh, before the portcullis. Uh, down this hallway, you'll notice the portcullis is not all the way to the ground, but it doesn't look like it would be easy to get underneath it. So it's like maybe a foot? Yeah, probably somewhere so, about that. But so, there should be a side room? So we could limbo. Yeah, there's that side room like there was on the other side. So quietly, Roderick just kind of signals to the left towards the other room. Vivian does not want to stand in the front since last time she was near one of these rooms. She got attacked by a skeletal champion. And a flaming, yeah, a flaming skeletal headless creature ran out wielding an axe and it would have been screaming if it had a head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, by all means, Roderick, you go first. Wait, do we want Roderick going first? No, it's no. either Vivian or me. No, he wasn't going first. He was just signaling, hey, this way. It's either Zenobia or you. Yes, I'm sorry, Zenobia yes. or me. Mm-hmm. I vote for you or Dwarfy. <laughs> Dwarfy is a war priest, which is kind of a fighter, but I think he's in the same camp as Roderick, and he's more... Mid-range. Yeah, he's mid-range. So it's me care. and you Someone up front, the them two in the middle, and she's bringing up the rear. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So they open the door. All right. Their hands the touch. It's romantic. <laughs> Push the door open. And... It says pull. <laughs> <laughs> it says pull, so you decide to pull the door open, <laughs> and you see an empty room. Well... Oh. Empty in the fact that there's nothing in it besides the furniture that's inside. Detect magic. No magic. Okay. Is the mechanism to raise the the gate 
It is. One thing you can tell, though, in this room as is that the fire definitely reached this room, mm. and the mechanism is damaged. Hmm. So, can we cast mending on it? Uh, you can try to cast mending, but it's a bit too big for mm-hmm. mending to mm. to handle. Mm. You would need something like make whole to fix it completely. We're not that high level yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. But you could do like craft checks to try to fix it, things like that. We don't have uh, those. I've got craft weapons. Will that work? For en- and- Does anyone have engineering? No. Hmm. Well, also try to do brute force. Brute force to try to lift the... <laughs> that won't result in breaking it. Is there anything I could roll as far as like... Uh, uh, Vivian's thinking she doesn't really know mechanics, but you know she she knows how like pulley systems work. So she's wondering like, does it just need a new rope? Basically, is what she's contemplating. Like, can she see the can she see the connecting stuff? And, and I don't know, make a wisdom check or something like that. You trying to rig something with the other parts that are here in the room? Mm-hmm. Um, basically, you can tell from the damage done to it from the fire, it would be really difficult without the proper tools to try to fix okay. it. Does it look like it's gonna so, so, so we can't crawl underneath it? No. You could, okay. can, we, can we lift it? You'd have to make strength checks, things like that to try to lift it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So can But like, we could just break Zenobi it too? Zenobi and I try mm-hmm. and lift it because we're the strongest ones. Mm-hmm. Well, so we could either lift it but could we just break it? it does. Can you cast open clothes yeah, on it? Breaking a portcullis would be very difficult. It's before but we it's start, weakened. Before we start lifting it, is there stuff that can be jammed underneath it That's so what that I'm we saying. don't have to hold it? I'm just There's wondering if it'd be easier this, to break it. Things in this room, like the, the cots and a table and things mm-hmm. like that. We're in the room. I'm talking about at the, the porticolos. Yeah, he's talking about what you could use the things in the room to block ah, the okay. All right. That's the, the stuff that's, 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 that's what's readily available. available. So after seeing all this, Roderick is like, let us see what we can see through the porticolos and then work on forcing it open after that. So he kind of signals the group to move out into the hallway and look through the holes in the portcullis. All right. So you look through the holes in the portcullis. You see another dark cell block just mirroring the one on the other side. But this one looks more damaged. Uh, the like support beams and things like that, they're still supporting and holding everything up, but they're blackened and charred. There's also the back area leading up to where the pit in the center would be is covered in water. Oh, it is the moss water marauder. Uh, well, I think we know where the bad guy's going to be. I want to roll perception. 26. Does, do I see anything that attracts my interest? Not really. So so we need to uh, get this porticulus open. Vivian's not helping with that. <laughs> she can guess. She'll keep casting guidance on a is Roderick, so she'll stand guard and she'll have her heavy uh, crossbow. No, yeah, crossbow. Locked and loaded. So if we are going to open this, we need two of us to lift the gate and then one of us to put various items underneath it to hold it open. Is there anything big enough to use as a lever and a fulcrum? I don't imagine there'd be anything strong enough. Not really. It's all wet and rotted, so Roderick sort of wipes his hands off and looks at their skill and is like, you ready? Do you have the highest strength? Yes. Mm-hmm. No, Zenobia is stronger than you. Roderick's strength is higher than Zenobia's. Oh, is it? What is your strength? Plus three. Okay. I thought she had plus three, too. Mm, plus two. She wanted that dex. Gotcha. So, which makes sense why Zenobia would be good for uh, jamming it. She's still plenty strong. Mm-hmm. I'm not a warrior, right? I'm a slayer. I like to... You're a sneaky warrior. I, I like to get in and get out. A little bit more finesse. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which would be perfect for slipping something in to stop the stop it from falling down. So, I'll be jamming things. And uh, I'll have... Like I said, Vivian will have her crossbow on watch. And uh, Dwarfies... Give guidance. Yeah, she's giving it to you just out of habit. You can give it to both of us. All right. So then, yes. Vivian is going to cast guidance on everyone. And then she's going to be standing there with her crossbow. All right, and Roderick's going to assist Thursko. All right, here we go. Roderick aids. Ooh, uh, that's a good roll. Uh, 19 plus 3 is 21, 22. And then, and then 2 for Roderick as well, eight, aiding, so 24. 24. It starts to, like, lift a little bit, but it's just too heavy, and you're not able to lift it. Well, while we're lifting it, can we call somebody else? You say, Dwarfy! Phone, phone a friend. Phone a friend. <laughs> Dwarfy can try to aid. All right, Dwarfy's going to aid, too. Dwarfy is a useless son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, he got uh, 
Eight. He that walk, is not enough. He walks up and stubs his toe. We jammed dwarfy. <laughs> well, so maybe Zenobia, you can help lift, and um, dwarfy or me can uh, can dwarfy use the heavy crossbow. Yeah. Here, dwarfy, hold this. Aim it that way. Don't point it at anybody, or point it at anybody that's not us. That's what I mean. He points it directly at Thurskill's butt. Nope. No, dwarfy. What? He'd do the same to me. No, I would. I totally would. Not the time. No. Okay. Chop chop. Guidance. Guidance. Let's go. All right. Project rolls to eight again. Aids again. What do I add to this? 12 plus my strength? You just need to roll a 10. So yeah, yeah. you'd be yeah. adding a strength, you're but you're good. Right. So that's two aids. aids. So that's plus four. Aid, aid. Well, I got 10 exactly. Well, that's uh, lower than last time, so. Yeah, it is. Oh, let's try again. Not enough. All right. So there's no damage for failing. So can you take a 20? Yeah. Yeah, we could just take 20 then. I'm down with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take a 20 plus the aid mm-hmm. for each of you. Yeah. So what would that get, make your total? It would be uh, 30. 30? So taking 20, so it takes about an hour, hour and a half mm-hmm. to finally get it up and lifted. With everybody aiding, you're finally able to start lifting this heavy portcullis up. And Vivian starts jamming the cots and stuff Yeah, I'll say, who's it? got telekinesis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I have a cot. Hurry, put it under. This yes. is very heavy. Yes, yes. I'm at it. I'm on it. All right, so so Vivian's like weaving in and out between you guys and just shoving stuff into the, the track. Is dwar- And Dwarfy is... Dwarfy's on guard duty. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we make an elaborate stack of things to hold this open. We're not playing any games. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't want it to fall back down. We do not Correct. want this to fall back down. Mm-hmm. All right. So like over the top. And we don't want to clumse it up so that if you bump into it, everything still, falls apart. I still so, think yeah, we no, should have broken it and furniture and... Dwarfy. <laughs> <laughs> you still put Dwarfy in, right? <laughs> All right. So we got it open? All right. So it's open. And Vivian right. takes her crossbow back. All right, so weapons drawn, high alert. We start uh, exploring Because we've been so quiet, Mm -hmm. nothing would know we were there. Well, I didn't say we were being stealthy. Just just on high alert. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dwarfy and whoever I am, Vivian, are going to continue doing the guidance resistance Roderick tag team duo. And we check the room. Okay, I've got my mace, and I've got that stupid haunt siphon again. Rolled a 27. You mean you have that stupid haunt siphon Perception. for the first time? For the first time, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, still in my hand. All right. You ro- rolled a 27 perception? Correct. So, you mo- move further into the Nevermore. As mentioned before, it's a dark area of the prison that you can tell was very obviously affected by the fire. The support beams are burnt. The cell doors for each of these cells is off its hinges and fallen over, and there's water from the back corner of the room coming up. It's probably maybe about an inch deep, so you're kind of splashing in water as you walk into the room. Ugh. Vivian's getting flashbacks to her first day at Harrowstone. Yeah. There's no there's no pit in the center, though. There looks like there would be, because the schematics look exactly the same. Uh-huh. You would just assume that that pit is completely flooded. Mm. And you can hear in that back corner of the room where the water is coming from the trickling sound of the water coming in mm-hmm. from the room. So it's a very echoey chamber with this trickling, Ugh. dripping water. And as you all enter the room, I need everybody to make a will save. Remember, Roderick, you got some bonus. Mm-hmm. 24. Uh-oh. 15. 13. I think this is my first failed will save. Okay, so Dwarfy got 20, Thursco got 17. So, Zenobia and Vivian, Mm. you see a letter appear on the walls Ah, in blood. Were we right? It's just one letter each. So there's a Z on one wall and a V on another wall. Splatterman. Oh, no. Told you this was Splatterman's abode. I, I agreed. I agreed. Letters on the wall. Blood. It's all a fraud. And as those letters appear, each of you also takes two points of wisdom damage. Oh, shit! Wisdom what? damage? That's not good. Are you fucking kidding me? What does that affect? Your wisdom! <laughs> God, Philip, killing me. And with that, we're rolling for initiative. Oh, come on. I fucking told you. Ooh, there's got a natural 20, 22, and then there's uh, the other guy. What's his name? He got a... Dwarfy. Nine. 
So in my haste to type up this initiative tracker, I misspelled Thurskin. So your name is currently Thurkles. <laughs> Steve Thurkles? Yes. Did I do that? <laughs> so Thurkles, what is your initiative? 22. <laughs> 22. It's a very serious battle. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. It was funny. Vivian. A uh, 15. 15. Zenobia. 7. Does anything get subtracted? Not not for wisdom on no. initiative. No. Okay. No. Roderick. 14. 14. And Dwarfy. 9. 9. All right. Thurskel, you are up first. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, did I see the letters too? No, you just heard me saying, but letters wall. But one thing I forgot to mention is with losing that, those points of wisdom and seeing the letters drawn on the wall, both of you are seized with the idea that you must remove these letters from the wall. Mm. No worries. Uh, religion? Will that do anything? Does he know what's going on? Does he yeah, know what's I happening? have no idea what's going on. I, didn't. I mean, you see the letters. Wait. Oh, I see the, the yeah, letters. You are... can see those letters. Uh-huh. But I don't know where the monster is. Correct. So... You can hold. I mean, that's all I can do. I can't fight anything right now. That's all I'm good for is fighting. All right. Delay. Delayed. Vivian. So I can't do anything else but try to get rid of the letters? Correct. Okay. So, uh... You feel like your soul and your sanity are being stripped away, and you must get these letters off the wall. Okay. No, no. And Vivian's going to run towards the wall. Well, not run. It's not that big a room. And as she's moving, she wants to pull a flask of holy water. All right. And I think that's all I can do in this turn. I think so. Okay. Roderick. Following suit, um, Roderick is going to draw a vial of holy water and wing it at the Z on the other wall opposite of where Vivian ran. Oh, yeah. I guess I could have just thrown it. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's panicked. She's lost wisdom. So would this be AC5 hitting a square? Uh, yes. All right, so he's going to wing the holy water at the square. Uh, even with natural two, manages to make it. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> You've been doing, rolling a lot of twos tonight. All right, so am I uh, rolling 2d4 holy water damage? What's going on here? Well, that's what you threw, so I mean... I don't know if I'm doing damage to a haunt. Am I washing blood off the wall? I mean, a number of things could be happening here. Either way, I think you would roll the damage, whether it goes through. Oh, and I want to roll a knowledge, too. Okay, so as you throw the holy water, it hits the wall, and the Z just fades off of the wall. <sighs> um, that was a good, good, good. So roll the holy water damage. Much better. That's seven points. Oh, seven points. Great. And you wanted to do a knowledge check I as well? I did want to roll a knowledge as well. Probably should have done it before, but <laughs> I was reacting. All right. Is that religion? This would be... Or religion. Yeah. Religion? Yeah. Religion. Natural one. You have no idea what the hell is going on. I'm really good at this game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and now I need everybody to make another will save. Oh, come on. I never... Okay. Natural 18. Thurskill got 21 and uh, Dwarfy got... Uh, Nine. Okay. And remember, your will save is lower now because your bonus. By how much? One. So I am at 16. 18 for Vivian. Okay. And what did Roderick get? Uh, 22. 22. So this time on the wall behind you, a D starts to form on the wall. Dwarfy. Mm-hmm. Mm. And Dwarfy now takes two points of wisdom damage and is racked with the feeling of he must get these letters off the wall. And it is Dwarfy's turn. Does Dwarfy roll a knowledge religion? Uh, he has to get the letter off the wall. He's very distracted. He can't get the knowledge religion right now, unfortunately. He would love to. I'm sorry I rolled natural ones, guys. (laughs) I would really like to have known. So, what he's going to do... Now, he just saw the holy water work. Yes, exactly. That's what he was going to do. He's going to throw his holy water. And oof, two total. total. Oh, add your dexterity base, base attack. Two. Uh, two, three, four, five. Five. So you Just get it hit. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what Roger did. <laughs> Same numbers too. <laughs> so he hit the thing. So, it, so it wipes off. It wipes the D off and roll the holy water damage. Two, two, four. Uh, Could be worse. Could be raining. Mm-hmm. Probably is. <laughs> Probably is. 
All right. Zenobia, it is your turn. Can I study it as well as... Study what? Something can be studied? Your letter. I mean, technically it's a target. I think we had this before on the uh, poltergeist. No, it was the rafters with the grappling hook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what the answer was. Gary said you could study it if it's a target. Because you took your All time right. to figure it out. And then I was super rude and sassy about the store called Target. So, I'm going to study it because uh, every point counts, right? And I'm going to throw a vial of hot holy water at the uh, V for Vivian. Okay. Let's see. You hit. What'd you roll? If two, it's above a five. Two, three... Plus my base attack bonus? Mm-hmm. Four, five, six. And then your dexterity, so it's eight. Eight. Oh, y'all are rolling low on these yeah, holy yeah. water throws. Hey. Luckily, it's only an AC5. That mm-hmm. was three natural twos in this combat. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing holy water at the wall. This bodes well. I mean, it might just be getting all the bad rolls out. I was going to say, you can only miss on a one, but I didn't want to say it, because then she'd roll a one. Mm-hmm. Five points. Five points of damage. Mm-hmm. All right. Thurska. Wait, wait. Does my letter stay? The, the letter... <laughs> <laughs> and now fades away. Do do we fe- do we feel better? Do I feel better? No, no, you do not. But there are no letters on the wall. There are no letters on the wall right now. So I don't feel that I have to go rub I, the wall anymore. No, I don't. I don't know what to do. I can't see anybody. I can't find anybody. I can't detect anybody. All I can do is is wait. All right. So still waiting. I, yeah. Okay. Vivian. Vivian, seeing the letter uh, be washed off the wall. <sighs> gives a sigh and looks back gratefully at Zenobia, and she wants to roll a knowledge religion. Okay. Don't roll a one. Should I have return? 21. 21? Yes. This is a haunt. Oh, we missed the first round. But Well, well we couldn't have done anything anyway, done. because we were possessed. It's a haunt! It's a haunt! And Vivian's going... Uh, can I tell where it's manifesting from? It's the entire room. So it's just kind of radiating okay. from everywhere. Well, she's not sure what to do with that, and she knows channels work, so she's just going to channel to harm undead. Because that hurts haunts, right? I think it does. Yep, yep, okay. it does. Like and that thing. will hit the whole room. Yeah, so she's she's going to move a, yeah, a little to the center. Um, she jumps in the water in the middle. Just kidding. <laughs> You're about ankle deep there. And uh, <laughs> five points of positive energy. Five points of positive energy. All right. Roderick, you are next up. Roderick is going to draw another holy water and ready in action to throw it the next time a letter shows up. Okay. So I need everybody to make another will save. Oof. I'm so nervous. Okay, we're good. Okay, Dwarfy got a five. Five. Thursko got a fourteen. Fourteen, okay. Roger got a twenty-three. Okay. Seventeen. Alright. And it's one less? Yes. Fourteen. Fourteen? Alright, so this round, there's a Z on one wall, a D back where the other one was, and a T. I was like, whose na- who's name starts with T? All right, Thurskel. <laughs> so, Dwarfy, Zenobia, and Thurskel take two points of wisdom damage. God. Does that trigger Roderick's ready to action? D- yes. I mean, I, it should. I was just making sure. <laughs> you didn't have anything up your sleeve. Natural two, again. So, Dwarfy has another two points? Yes. Ooh. Same thing with Zenobia? Correct. All right, so that was the fourth natural two we rolled to throw holy water at the wall. <laughs> Thankfully, it hits. Yes, another seven points. Seven points. All right. He hit the V this time. So there wasn't a V. Oh. A T. There's a T, a Z. He hit the T v. this time. A T? No, he hit the D. No, he hit the D. You're right. The D. He hit the D. <laughs> he, hit the D. <laughs> he hit the D. <laughs> <laughs> he got the D. <laughs> All right. So the D fades from the wall, but you're still left with the Z and a T. Dwarfy. Who can act because the D is gone. Exactly. So Dwarfy is gone. <sighs> You were so excited from Davatar. He was, because he's going to... I guess the only thing he could really do, because he can't see anything either, he needed to throw the holy water and cast Bless. Bless wouldn't really be a good option. Really? No. Because it's attack, right? Yeah. Well, we're all hitting on natural two, so the only thing we'd miss on is a natural one, which misses automatically anyway. You definitely want to do damage. Yeah. So, throwing holy water is a solid I, option. I can tell Philip's stressed. His hair looks like a cockatiel. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make it defy gravity? Product. <laughs> okay, well, then, well, well, it is. And it can only miss if you roll a natural one. Hush, hush. Oh, no, that's 13. Yes. That'll hit, so Two, roll the damage. Four. Nice. nice. Four. Oh, wow, that's the highest we've rolled. Max damage on that. Wait, do I have to add anything to no. it? Okay. What did you that? throw at? 
Your your own? I no, because he threw he, on D. Okay. I'm gonna throw on Z. Okay. So Dwarfy throws the holy water at the Z. This time, not only does the Z fade away, all of the letters fade away. Yeah. Mm. As the room starts to collapse. Mm. And we'll roll reflex saves next week. What the uh, fuck? <laughs> Gary! That's just messed up. We need to finish this combat. I'm mad at you. I was gonna say, Richard looks cranky. <laughs> Richard looks cranky. <laughs>